Hi all, welcome back. Through this video, I am dealing with microscopy part of Kerala PSC Food Safety Officer exam. What is a microscope? As we all know, through our naked eye, we can't see a microorganism. So we use microscope that gives magnified image of specimen with high resolution. Simple microscope. If microscope having only one lens, then it is called single microscope. That is a magnifying glass with double convex lens and short focal length. Compound microscope. If a microscope having more than one lens, then it is called compound microscope. Usually a compound microscope has three lens, namely eyepiece or ocular lens, where you look to see the image of your specimen. Second one, objective lens used to increase the magnification of specimen. IPs also increase the magnification of specimen. Third one is condenser lens, collect and focus the light from illuminated to the specimen. Magnification. Magnification is the ability of a lens to magnify image of specimen. It is the ratio of size of image to size of object. We use it to say 10x magnification, 20x magnification, etc. In case of 10x magnification, it means the microscope gives 10 times larger image of the specimen. I told you earlier, objective lens and eyepiece lens magnify the specimen. So, total magnification power is equal to objective lens magnification power into eyepiece lens magnification power. Resolving power. Resolving power is the ability of lens to differentiate two points in an object. Simply, it is the power of a lens to improve the clarity of image. The factors affecting resolving power are numerical aperture and wavelength. Resolving power is directly proportional to numerical aperture and inversely proportional to wavelength. That means as wavelength increases, resolving power decreases. So, from electromagnetic radiation, we use only visible region of light in microscope. Numerical aperture is the measure of ability of a lens to collect light from the specimen. It is the multiple of refractive index and angular aperture. Refractive index is directly related to optical density. Immersion of specimen in oil increases the optical density that leads to increase in resolving power. Angular aperture is the angle between specimen and objective lens. As angular aperture increases, resolving power also increases. So to increase angular aperture, we can reduce the distance between specimen and objective lens or we can increase the thickness of lens. Next is important parts of a microscope. Arm, support tube and connect it to base. Body tube, connect eyepiece to objective lens. Nose piece, part that holds two or more objective lens. Stage, platform to place the slides. Fine adjustment and coarse adjustment knob to focus the specimen. While working with high power objective lens, we use fine adjustment knob to focus the specimen. Iris diaphragm, control the light going through the aperture. Mirror, use it to reflect light to the specimen. Microscopy is of three types. First one, light or optical microscopy. Bright field microscopy, dark field microscopy, confocal microscopy, face contrast microscopy, fluorescent microscopy comes under optical microscopy. Bright field microscopy. In bright field microscopy, the background will be bright and the specimen should be dark. In case of colorless specimen, we can't see a colorless specimen in the background of a bright light, so we need to stain the specimen. This bright field microscopy can be used to observe the live specimen. Dark field microscopy. In dark field microscopy, background will be dark and specimen will be bright. This one also uh, used to observe live specimen. Dark field microscopy is very sensitive to dust because dust will light up in dark background. Face contrast microscopy varies the intensity of light so we can observe colorless specimen in bright background without staining. Fluorescence microscopy use fluorescent dyes example Alexa 350 BFE cascade blue to stain the specimen. Confocal microscopy in this type of microscopy 
scanning of small sections are done and join them together for better view. Second one, electron microscopy. Electron microscopy cannot be used to view living cells because for electron microscopy we have to prepare the specimen by dehydrating it or washing it. So we can't use the living cell for this purpose. Scanning electron microscopy, it uses tungsten wire as cathode which releases electrons. And there is a uh, high electric field formed between uh, this cathode and anode. And a uh, electron beam is directed to the specimen. So the specimen gets excited and the electron escapes from the outer shell of the specimen. This escaped electron is uh, detected by a SE detector and it is transferred to a computer monitor. In transmission electronscopy, an electron beam is directed to the specimen and it is transmitted. This transmitted electron is detected by a detector and send the signal to a computer monitor. This type of microscope is very expensive and for sample preparation laborious uh, sample preparation is needed. Scanning probe microscopy. Atom force microscopy, it forms image of surface using a physical probe that scans the specimen. That's all about microscopy. After every 5 videos, there will be a mock exam. To attend the mock exam, please join the telegram channel. The link is given in the description box. Thank you.